After Ruby blog, I wrote about configuring a Sentry server on Ubuntu. And Sentry is an air tracking software product, which has many different subscription options. So you can use their hosted instance, and they do have a free option with up to 10,000 events per month with one user. Or you can use one of their paid plans if you have more users, or if you need to retain data for a longer period of time, or if you have more than 10,000 events within a month. However, the article covered setting up Sentry within your own environment so you can host it yourself. So in this episode, we're going to look at setting up our Rails application to use Sentry. And I'm a big fan of Sentry because I've tried doing some things where I'm catching the errors within the Rails application and I'm posting it to Slack, but it doesn't always catch all of the errors. And there's some situations where I would want to be notified of something and this error tracker just didn't pick it up. However, with Sentry, I found that even some errors within like your background jobs, a sidekick, or other situations where you would not normally get notified of the error, Sentry still picks those up and then sends them out, and it definitely beats parsing your logs. So to get started, we'll click the Get Started up on the top right of Sentry.io. And then we'll just fill out our information, we'll create an email address and a password, and then agree to their terms and privacy policy. And then we can create our project, to then monitor our application. And in this case, we're gonna be using a Rails application. However, you can see that it supports many other languages and frameworks. So I'll click on Rails, and I'll just rename this project to Drift and Ruby Test. And then we'll create the project. And one thing I really like about Sentry is that it actually gives you some documentation on how to set it up within your application. And we're gonna follow these steps now. So within our gem file, we'll add the gem Sentry Raven. And be sure to run bundle, but you don't have to restart your Rails application yet because we are going to create a config initializer for Sentry. And so the next step is to copy this code. And instead of putting in the config application.rb, I'm going to copy it over into a initializer file. So I'll put it under the config initializers and then Sentry.rb. And so within our config initializers in our Sentry.rb file, we just paste in that code. And there's another initializer file in a Rails 5 application called the filter parameter logging. And within this file, you can see that we have a Rails application configure filter parameters. So we're adding into this config parameter, the password. And the purpose of this is that whenever a post occurs within your application, you're sending parameters from a form or something back into your application. And when you're tailing the logs, you can see all the parameters that are added in. And this will obfuscate or hide the password from being in plain text within your log. So it definitely is a needed security. And what you want to make sure that you do is also prevent the password from being leaked in your log files or in your error files that are in Sentry. So within our Sentry RB, we can add a additional line. And this is just going to say config sanitize fields. And then we're referencing the parameter filters from the parameter filtering logging.rb. And then we make sure that all of the attributes within there are strings. And then sometimes when you're looking at a log, it doesn't really help you to just have the error message because you might need to be able to go back to the actual user that was having the issue to kind of recreate the problem so you know how to fix it. And they offer the params and sessions where Within your application controller, you can have a before action, which will run a private method. And within this private method, we're adding user context. And then you can also see that you can add extra content. And we'll see what this looks like when we add these in and then have an error on the application and gets post to Sentry. However, I'm not gonna do any kind of authorization. So we're not actually gonna have a current user ID or anything, but we'll get the point. So within our application controller.rb file, I create the before action, and then I create the private method set Raven context. And within here, we have our user context with the session and passing in the current user ID. But then we can also pass in something else. And we can also pass in additional parameters like foo and then bar. And another very helpful thing to do is to know what version is actually being affected by this error that gets reported to Sentry. So I'm gonna create a version.rb file and then within the config application.rb, I'll just require a relative path to this version file. And within the version file, I'll have a major, minor, tiny, and then a pre version. And these just get compacted in and joined with a period. 
So this will follow the semantic versioning, and then have access to this global variable app version. And then within the Sentry configuration, we can add a new line and then just call the config.release equals the app version. So now to test this out, I created a scaffold called users. And within here, we have our standard CRUD actions and we have our index and our show. So we're first going to go to our index and then we're going to click the button to create the new user. Once a new user is created, the create action will send us to the show page. And on the show page, we're just going to put in a error. So we're just going to call raise and this should create an exception. And let's go ahead and test this out. So I'll first create a new user and I'll just fill this out and then I'll hit create. And then you see that we get our error because we had that raise within our show page. And you can see that we got one error and this is affecting one user. And if we click on this, we can actually get some great details about this application. So on the right hand side, we can see when this occurred and we can also see the release now because we added in the config version. So it gives us the relevant bit of code where the error occurred. We can see information about the request and then we can see some context information about the user. And in this case, there is our foo and then there's a the value bar that got passed in. And then you get additional data of like the parameters that were passed as well as some information about the server. And there's a lot more cool things that you can do under the project settings. So if we go to project settings and then we go down to the all integrations, you can see that there's many different programs that you can integrate with. A lot of times they suggest that you integrate in with your code repo. So with GitLab or GitHub or something similar, and then you can also have it auto create a Jira ticket. So when Sentry reports the error, even though your free account has only seven days retention, you can have it automatically create a Jira ticket with a lot of the information so that you can assign a developer to the work. And another great plugin is a Slack where you can configure this plugin and you just point it to a webhook that you create on the Slack side and then you can have it point to a certain destination and that way the relevant people can follow that channel and be notified when something happens. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.